I love the music in Tristram. It has that classic acoustic guitar sound to it, just like from the original Diablo, and played the same music when you revisited it in Diablo 2. That's not quite the same song, but it uh, has the echoes of it. Welcome back to Let's Play Diablo 3, everybody. Let's uh, go and talk to Deckard Kane. How might I use the crown to reach the Skeleton King? Ah, at last. With it, you can unlock the sealed door in the room where you rescued me and enter the royal crypts. When you find the Skeleton King, place the crown atop his head and destroy him. When he is destroyed, I shall finally reach the star. Okay, so, as I understand it, we have to place the crown on the head of the Skeleton King to destroy him, and that will bring him back to life? What? What can he do as a ghost that he can't do as a living thing? And if we kill him, won't he just come back as a ghost again? I don't know, this whole premise seems a bit off. What else do you have to say? It is good to see you back at the forge, blacksmith. Work needs doing. No one is going to do it for me. That is very true, but we also need people to fight. No, this is my trade, and I'm the best. I'll make you the weapons you need to kill every last demon you see. Deal? Let's talk to Captain Rumford. I kind of like Captain Rumford's character. The news continues to worsen. How can you continue to wade into the fray with nary a thought for your own safety? It is madness. If I don't fight, who will? Well, she just shut you up. I volunteered to help because it seemed the right thing to do. But I'm no leader of men. Few are. But you are the best they have right now. So you need to lead. That's a simple thing for you to say. You were born to fight monsters like the Risen Dead. Me? I'm just a farmer. You're a farmer? Huh. Well, he's way o in over his head. That would suck. Well, nobody else is going to do it but him. I kind of like Captain Rufford's character, like I said before. He's kind of a... He's kind of a tragic hero. He's doing the best he can. Head on to Leorex Passage. Just like we came out when we rescued Kane. We get over there. I'd really want to see what's over there. No, it's probably nothing. It's probably just a blank void. Hey, there's my name. Well, let's open this ornate door. See, it says ornate door on it. Zool, motherfucker, Zool! Down we are into the cathedral, level two. So that's what Diablo has always been about. Exploring cathedrals and randomly generated maps. As far as I know, this level is randomly generated. But based on a number of things. And right here you can see the chandelier flying floating above. If there were enemies here feasting on corpses, you could just hit that and kill them all instantly. Or at least deal a crap load of damage to them. Probably could have lured him back, actually. But I see an enemy there. Raging skeletons. I killed him quickly. Did that skeleton just hit the other one with his sword? <laughs> oh, these guys. They're not the greatest of soldiers, skeletons. They don't have a brain in their head. Die, two guardian. Die again. Once I get a couple more pages of training, I'll be able to train the blacksmith to craft even better stuff. And thankfully, it crosses over between playthroughs, so that's really cool. You can craft more stuff the more you play through the game. What's in the weapon rack? Knuckles. Those suck. You suck, Knuckles. Nothing in the bookcase. What about this bookcase? Nothing in that bookcase. 
doors here. Let's not quite go through the doors yet. I like to clear out everything I can that doesn't have a door. Four monsters killed. All right. All righty. Let's check these bookcases. Yeah, that's what Diablo is like. A lot of action followed by a lot of cleanup. All right. I think that's everything from here. Although there's more stuff on the left side. Well, let's avoid that for now down here. I hear enemies. Crap, unburied. Knock me down. You can do shit like that. Okay, that... Good thing these guys don't turn into little... Ew. Let's zoom in on that. Ew, look at that. You can see the rib cage and everything, and you can see them disappear from existence. Crap. More of these tomb guardians, damn it. Get credit for it? Die already. He's trying to deal damage to you. No, no credit. Little weapon rack. What's in here? A uh, hand crossbow. Crappy hand crossbow. Well, yeah, eight less damage than I currently have. Yeah, I'll totally equip that right now. Uh, what to talk about during this rest of this LP? Uh, the Diablo series has always been one that I really enjoyed. In fact, any game that's kind of based on that idea, I really like as well. If you saw my review of the top games of 2011, The Binding of Isaac was number one. Because it borrowed so much from the Diablo series, or just in general, games like NetHack, which Diablo is sort of the, uh, sort of the offspring of, or the spiritual successor. Not really, not made by the same company, obviously. NetHack isn't made by Blizzard. I'm not quite sure who made Net NetHack. But it just used the randomness and permadeath. Permadeath is in this game, although I'm not sure if it's in the uh, beta version. You might be able to make a hardcore character, I'm not sure. But I'm not playing on hardcore, even though I have yet to die in the game. My name is Lachdanon, and I am cursed. Once the captain of King the Oryx army. I left only to honor my land and my king. No man has a greater love for his king than I had for mine, even as I drove my blade through his dark and corrupted heart. Oof. Back down in the tortured soul. Well, the first uh, Diablo game, I actually played it on the PlayStation. And that game was really neat because... But it was interesting as well because in order to save your game, you needed 15 blocks. Or the 15, I, no, I think it might have been 10 memory card blocks in order to save your game. So you pretty much had to have an entire memory card just devoted to Diablo. However, you did have the option of just saving your character, which only took one block. The game is 
essentially had a, uh, a permadeath mode, where if you died, you would just lose all your things, and you could reload your character. It was Lazarus, but not if you had saved that him. I am certain. He alone had the king's ear and whispered dark and evil magics into it, instilling the notion of an imminent attack by Westmarch. Afraid to speak against the archbishop, the councillors not in their independent dreams and sent us left to die. Hope you were able to hear that. I don't like to talk over the dialogue because I just like the I like the voice acting. The voice acting is pretty good, but some of the characters are poorly done. I will admit. But the kind of somber journals of Locked On and everything, I think it works. I also notice that they're not really audio logs; they're actual diaries. But it's just reading it in his voice. You just sort of accept that as how you would understand how the journal would have been written. Let's either double it and check these. Eh, nothing on the bookshelves. We're dead villagers. High belt. You equip anything good? And crossbow. Nope. I'm going to get a better chance of finding magical items. Ring of Thrashing. Oh yeah, I picked that up a while ago. Increases our maximum damage by one. I should have dropped these in my stash before I came back, but I won't run out of space. And there's sometimes enemies down there that are like in a chanting circle. Armor rack. Bracers. Uh, do bracers do anything good? No, they don't. Increase our protection by one. But I like having the damage, because I'm going to stay out of range anyway. What's up here? A lot of people complain that you can't walk around using the WASD keys, but then it wouldn't feel like Diablo. I mean, Diablo has always been you move by clicking, or in this case, you can click and drag, and you'll always and you'll go in that direction. See, like that. Or you can just click and they'll they'll walk and stop there. But they can click and automatically search an area. But you use the same you use the same mouse to move and attack. Which means like if you're running away, you're going like this and then turning and attacking and then going like this. And you're moving the mouse a lot. But I think that makes the game a lot more engaging. I mean if you can move with the WSD keys and and attack with the mouse then it would feel a lot more like something like World of Warcraft, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but they're trying for something different here. This is a, essentially a Diablo MMO, since it's always online. And people have complained about that too. Honestly, I have a fairly good connection, so I haven't really noticed any problems with it. Even though I do have to daisy chain my PC into my laptop, and then use a, a network sharing for it. But I have not noticed any lag at all. There's people who have, and um, it sucks, I guess. But I really have not noticed any problem. I have barely even noticed that I'm playing this online because, well, I haven't played with anybody uh, since I don't have anybody in my friends list. Nobody I know has gotten into the beta. Part of the reason I'm actually doing this. Uh, but I'll probably be playing some public games later and put my thoughts on that. Oh my, lots of enemies here. Way. I want to kill the Tomb Guardian. Down he goes, awesome. You got shields, don't you? Not when I shoot you from behind, you don't. Aha. Ooh, another t left turn. When we returned from our horrific defeat in Westmarch, my beloved king lost all pretense of sanity. He seethed with rage, spitting curses upon us as traitors. With great sorrow, I ran him through. And another feature of this game is the skeletons can climb up through the windows over the arches and everything. Let me see if I can get as many on screen as I as possible. Ah, out of the way. No. I think there's more over here. Hello there. Yoo-hoo. Come and get it. Fresh meat here. Alright, now let's see if I can kill them all. Let's drop a Caltrops here. What do 
I get for it? Yeah, 48 experience. Yeah, this is definitely a metagame concept, but it adds a lot of... It adds a lot to it. And, oh, I missed one. I missed two. Aw. I like, and I like it. it. It forces you to kind of think ahead if you want to get just that bonus. I mean, you could just run around killing them on your own. I mean, the experience boost you get from it is really minor compared to, like, the amount you get from just killing them normally. Yeah, I got, like, 400 experience for killing each of those. Or not each of them, but just together. Then I get a bonus of, like, 40. It's really not that major, but it's just, it's neat to try to get your multiplier up. It's just standard thing with a lot of these other games that did that, like God of War, and... And you, it also keeps a running record for how many you've done in a row. I believe my record is 88, but... It's up in the 80s somewhere. But, that's the end of this episode. When we continue, deep down into Cathedral Level 3. Later, folks.